guest tonight has been a trendsetter, a movie star who dominated the 70s and 80s. With her special brand of glamour, the image she evoked was pure male fantasy. Although her life and loves have been played out in the magazine, there remains a side to her that not many know. I'm delighted to have a rendezvous with Zenith Aman. It's great to have you here. It's wonderful to be here. You know, I saw a film of yours last night on television. What, what did you see? Yeah, don't keep my rap. <laughs> and it was okay. great fun. Have you, do you see your old, old films? Do you see any of them? Uh, Simi, you know, my sons sometimes, uh, you know, sit up and, and, and watch my old movies and they call me in and they say, Mama, you know, watch this and watch that. And um, I do sit down sometimes and watch a couple of things with them. When you see your films, do you connect to the person you were then, or do you feel you're a different Zenith today? Well, I, I, I know it was the same Zenith, but you know, I've grown so much. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's uh, 20 more years of life and living yeah. and experience that has been packed in. Mm. So it is the same person who's uh, grown a lot. Grown a lot. Been mm -hmm. through a lot. Yes, that's true. For s for 17 years, Zenith, you had the kind of success and adulation given to few. Did you enjoy your career? I did. Uh, but, Simi, you know uh, what happens when you receive that kind of adulation. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, uh, you take it as part of the course, as something that comes with the territory, yeah. the kind of work that you do. And uh, you don't realize that it's something exceptional or something yes. special. Till, you know when you move along yeah. and 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 it goes away and then you realize that yes it was special at the time but tell me how did you deal with the media who was always prying into your life that was the most difficult part about being a star about being a successful star that had to be the most difficult part and I think I think the years that I was married and I I lived a very quiet life that was one of the things that I really enjoyed being away from the media mm -hmm. glare because all your so-called loves, so-called romances were in headlines, Enoch. I know. Sometimes they were, they were fiction also. They mm. were fictitious stories also. They were not necessarily always the truth. But that was the most difficult part. And, uh, and I really didn't miss that at all when I stopped working. Yes, I can understand that. But I have wanted to ask you, as a child and growing up, what is it that you wanted most from life? Was it wealth or fame or love? What was it? I think love, definitely. But you got the wealth, you got the fame. Did you get yeah, the love? I don't think so. You don't think no. so? You were right on top, Zenith, on top of your career, a superstar. And then you just suddenly gave it all up and decided to marry a man who was relatively unsuccessful. Was it a difficult decision for you? Simi, at the time, it, uh, you know, I, I was ready for motherhood more than mm. anything. Mm. I felt my biological clock was ticking mm. and I really wanted to have children. And truly, that was the chief reason I got married. Mm. Because I genuinely believe that the only reason to be married is to, is to, to have a family. Yes, to have a family. And uh, I felt ready for that at the time. And, uh, and so I did, I guess. But uh, what, what drew, you, drew you to Mazza at that time? Oh, yeah. it's difficult to say now. Um, I, I, I think in, in our lives, you know, sometimes you may be ready for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you may be ready for certain changes. And then the person who happens to be there at that mm -hmm. point of time in your life, you uh, try to fit into what your needs are. Mm. And uh, I mean, I think that's the best way that I can explain it at this point. Mm. But in what ways do you feel that you were compatible? <laughs> oh, dear. 
Um, difficult to say now. Difficult to say now. Yeah, because why I say, because I know that there were lots of men who were in love with you, Zenith. And I remember during shooting once, we talked about it. There was this industrialist, very good looking, who was madly in love with you and wanted to marry you. And a lot of women would have jumped at it, but you didn't even consider it at that time. So I want to know what it is, what it was in Mazza that made you choose him over all the others. I, I can't um, really decide what it was. It was just that probably that Mazza was in the right place at the right yes. time, I guess. As a matter of fact, I married him in the face of a lot of opposition from my family, which was my mother primarily, because we were very, very, very close. Yeah, I know. And she was very opposed to the marriage. And um, subsequently, she did, uh, she did have a heart attack, and she did take it very badly. Yeah. And it was only after the children came that she began to come to terms with it. What did she feel? What did she say? Well, she didn't want me to get married to mother, period. But did she say any reason why? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know whether this is a platform to discuss this, but uh, yes, she did. She was very vociferous about what she mm. felt and very strong in what she felt. Mm. And, um, and uh, well, you know, I, uh, we got married away from India mm. because um, I don't think it would have happened otherwise. Mm. Did the <clears throat> difference in your success status ever create problems in the marriage? Because it's... It's quite hard for men to accept a star wife, you know. Simi, you know, at the time, I wasn't in analysis when I was in the marriage. But when I started looking back, I realized that, yes, there were never things that were said consciously. But there was always an element of, uh, of uh, wanting to, uh, to disconnect the person from the outside world. Mm. To, to try and uh, keep, well, well, really to keep me at home with, with, the, with, with the kids you know, mm. more than, uh, you know, encouraging me to go out and being my, you know, be my own person mm. or to, I think in a partnership, two people have to nurture and cherish each other mm. and allow each other to grow and be what mm. they want to be. But uh, I never got that. I was never allowed to, to grow and to, and, and to fulfill my destiny as, mm. as, as a person. Because soon after you got married, you seemingly vanished into the shadows. What were those 12 years like, Zenith, of your marriage? To me, very honestly, I think the first year after marriage, mm -hmm. I realized that I had made a mistake. But since I had made the decision and done it against everybody's will, yeah. I decided to live by it, to stick it through and to make it work. I'm not necessarily saying that it was the best thing for him either. Mm -hmm. You know, but since I was there, and and it it was a difficult time from the first year. It really? was a difficult time. Why? Well, because I was pregnant with my child, and Mother was not there. He was somewhere else. Um, there was a big article in in the Stardust at the time about the woman that he was seeing. It's it's a reality. It's a reality. And uh, from day one, I mean, as soon as, as, as soon as my son was born, I wanted out and, and we discussed it. 
and and then I thought that my child deserved a, a chance, and uh, and so I stayed. And then I didn't just stay. I, I I did everything that I thought had to be done to make it work. I thought that I would probably get back into the workforce mm. when my younger son was five years old. But before that could happen, mother fell very grievously ill. Mm. And uh, I think about 93 to 97, I spent five years battling for his health and his life. And they were very, very, very difficult years. And, you know, I, it, I'm, it wasn't easy for him either. It wasn't easy for him. But it was very difficult for all of us as well, all of us around him. Because yeah. everybody knows how you have battled. You really I did. You, do, do people know that? Well, I don't know. I know that. Sini, I did. I took it as a personal challenge for five years, you know, to see that I could do everything under the sun. We spent seven months in the beach candy, in the ICU. We, we, every hospital in Bombay, you know, we were just in and out of hospitals. Mm -hmm. I learned to give injections, to do dressings, you know, he was living with a bag outside his body for 18 months. I learned to manage the bag, change the tubes, take care of him. We had nurses. I, I did everything that there was to do. And when the doctors here gave up, you know, mm -hmm on his problem. I flew with all his papers overseas and found the best doctor and took him there. And when everything was done and that particular problem was over, I think, I think it had taken its toll on yeah. me. Because five years with no light at the end of the tunnel, day after day after day after day is a long, long time. And I really was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I'm sure. Because it was night after night, day after day, and it was a lone battle. Mm. And I have no guilt mm. because I, I know that 99% of women in my shoes would not have lasted there as long and as honestly and as sincerely as I did because it was just me and I was handling the children, the household, his state of health, and a film that had been incomplete in the cans for many, many years. You invested your own money in it as well? Some of my own, not all of it, some of my own. Who looked after you in all these years? Nobody. But that's what happens, Sinny. You give and you give and you give and you give. And then there's nothing left to give. No. Because you're completely wrung out and depleted. No. And that is what you want at the end of the day, is somebody to say, well, how are you today? But I never had that, not for 12 years. Were there no tender moments, loving moments, caring moments? I don't know, Simi. Mm. I, I don't want to put down somebody who's not here, yeah, I but... It's, it's, it's difficult for me to talk about basically because Mother's not here to say anything I on know. his account, you know, on his own account. He's not here to talk about himself and talk about, you know, what he went through, what he felt. I know what I went through and what I felt. You know, anybody who has a major illness becomes a very difficult person to live with. Not, not because they want to, but, but because they're suffering themselves, mm. which he was. Mm. And then in his battle for life, you know, everything else became secondary. So my needs were never, 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 never consider, you know, considered. Never. Never. And, and that really, at the end of the day, you know, is what brought, brought about, uh, you know, us uh, coming apart. When it became untenable. Well, then it became, it, then it became a battle for my survival yeah. as well. Mm. Because there was just so much... Um, you know, that, 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 that a person could take. Yeah. And so it was at that time that you decided, I'm, I must have out. Is that right? I think so. But not at, not at a time when he was crucially ill, Sinny. No. Because the problem that he had with his pancreas had been completely resolved. Okay. But he... I, oh, dear. You have to help yourself, and you have to have other people also wanting to help you. What had happened with Mazhar is that he had stopped helping himself. Whatever mm. he was doing, he was inflicting further damage on himself. And 
I, I couldn't stay there and watch him do that. So after, after months and months of, of, of asking him not to and telling him that if he wouldn't stop, you know... What it, would he say? Uh, well, you know, what really happened was that he became addicted to prescription drugs, painkillers, and he was, he was at a point taking seven a day. And the doctor had said that there was a good possibility that his kidneys would pack up. The children would request him, I would request him, we would, you know, mm. tell him, you know. Don't do it. Don't do it. But uh, to no avail. And eventually, his kidneys did pack up. And this was after I had, you know, opted out because... It took you a long time to do that. It took me a very long time to do that, Simi, because when I left, I still cared. Yeah. Because I'd fought so many of his battles so hard for him, it was very difficult for me to leave, even though it was a question of self-preservation. When you say that for 12 years, nobody bothered or nobody wanted to ask how you are, did you not establish your own needs? I, I grew up in a single parent family. I had no idea of what a marriage was like. I think we all grow up with these ideals that you want to be the perfect mother, you know, you want to support the husband and propel him and push him and do whatever is necessary for his success and his future and his everything so that, you know, whatever is his and comes down to your children and so on and so forth. Doesn't work. Never happens. My children have been left completely bereft completely bereft. Every last penny that he possibly had has been taken, taken by his mother and sister. There is nothing. So there are no rules. There are no rules. Sinat, you didn't share your life. You gave it away. I know that. A woman shouldn't do that. I know that. You know it now. I know it now. And the sad thing is that my children were led to believe otherwise. What do you mean? My oldest son, I think, to punish me for the fact that I had left, was told the most rotten, awful things about me and uh, was led to believe the worst, really. They tried to take my child away from me as punishment for leaving, really. And, and I think that was the worst blow. But it must have been terrible because there is a saying, lovers don't break your heart, your children do. They can hurt you. Absolutely. Give you much more pain than anybody else. Absolutely. But the thing is, Simi, he, he's a child. Yeah. And uh, all I can do right now is to make up to him for what happened in those months and, and, and hope that those months have not left him scarred, you know, forever. Because both these boys are very precious to me. What do they feel about mother today? They love their father very much, and, uh, and rightly so, because yeah. mother loved them very much as well. And uh, they don't know the politics of anything, yeah. Simi, at all. But see, when I spoke to you soon after mother died, you were absolutely distraught. I wasn't prepared for him to die. I had fought way too hard for him to live. I really believed, I believed that he would get the kidney. I believed that he would live. So it was, his death was overwhelming. It really was. Mm. And the worst blow was that they would not allow me to pay my last respects to his body. They? His mother and his sister. Why? Well, they were trying to punish me for leaving him. So what did you do? Well, I, I, it was like a bad Fellini film because it was, it was, here was somebody I had given so many years of my life to. Mm. He was the father of my children. And when I asked if I could go, I was told, no, you cannot come. You cannot come to pay your last respects. There was so much anger and bitterness and hatred that, uh, so you didn't get to do no, it? No, I did. You did? I did anyway, because I thought that I ought to, and I did. You know, it's been said by a wise woman 
that it's important for a person to go through heartbreak at least three or four times. That's what makes one human, and that's what makes one compassionate, and that's what love is all about. I don't know. I know. I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I also don't. Think it's I wouldn't recommend it no. at all. is such a thing as the sex goddess syndrome. Mm -hmm. When you're a successful woman and you're also a sex symbol, men have all these fantasies about you. You know that. I realize that now. I didn't when I was working and I was, you know, uh, given this label at that point. Mm -hmm. I was just having fun with what I did. <laughs> it was just a persona on screen and, you know, nothing more than that. Yes. But when that happens, how can you know whether it is the real love or your status, or the fantasy of Zenith Aman that the men you meet are after? You can never really tell. You can never really tell. It's impossible to say that, you know, I know that this is the reason why somebody's with me. You can't tell. You have been through physical abuse and violence publicly. How did you cope with it, Zenith? Simi, if you're referring to the chapter in the past, yeah. it was very brief. Right now, in my mind, for many years in my mind, it's been obliterated because I think that's what the human mind does. When there's something distinctly unpleasant, you just close your mind to it and pretend that it never happened. And uh, you promise yourself that it will never happen again. And uh, that's how you cope. Would you say you've been a good judge of people? I think that I've always been very impulsive, Simi. I think that I've always let my heart rule my head. Totally. But you grow. I don't think I will ever get married again. And I definitely won't have any more children. You don't want to get married again? Never. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Are you happy being single? Am I happy being... You have to qualify being single as uh, opposed to being married. You can have, you can have mm. a relationship without being married. Mm. I never want to get married again. Yeah, but you can't be alone either, Zenith. No, I do know that. I have to accept that. But isn't, is there, uh, isn't there a sense of insecurity in a relationship like that? I don't think so. With my mother's passing and mm. with Madhar's passing, he was a young man, 42 years old, when he died. What is permanent in this life? There's nothing that's permanent, Simi. Why should we assume that any relationship is going to be permanent? Your children are not yours. They're going to grow up and go away and have their own lives. I think that there is more respect in a relationship when it is not bound by, you know, mm. signatures and tradition and laws and rules. You are with each other because you want to be and because you choose to be, not because you have to be. And there's no question of taking each other for granted. I think that that's what happened to me in my marriage. I was mm. completely taken for granted. How does it feel not being in the heat of the limelight anymore? Well, I haven't been for so many years that yeah. it, it, it really doesn't matter. I have children who keep me very grounded. They look at my photographs and say, Mom, you look like Morticia. 
Mom, you look like, you know, a bad copy of, I won't name the actress. <laughs> she might get offended. <laughs> I, I <laughs> You've had traffic stopping fame. How do you manage your life now? What do you do in a day? It's, it's um, you know, household chores, you know, plan menus, meals, you know, sit down with kids for their projects, their homework, you know, plan what they want to do. Um, really, that is it at the moment because I'm not really back in the workforce yet. Do you want to act again? I don't know. I'm very undecided about what I want to do. Looking back, would you do it things differently, Zenith? If you yes. were to start all over again? Yes, there are some things that I would do differently. Like? I would listen to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I would, because I think that as a parent, I see now that we have years of experience and, and we see very far ahead. Yeah. And no matter how impetuous or impulsive you are, I think you should listen to your parents. I would definitely have listened to her on many occasions. Zina, I've enjoyed talking to you. It's always wonderful to meet you. And this has been a very lovely evening for me. I want to thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for this rendezvous. Thank you. Thank you.